Pelleggi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Welcome back. Today we're just going to do a quick video on a comparison of different mag lights that I have. And there's a good reason why, as you'll see. Um, these are not exactly the same, even though they look like they are. The three over here are what I consider Generation 1. They're just the basic mag light. And this one's actually called the third generation, which is, of course, now LED. Now, there's a lot of differences between these, believe it or not. These two are actually very similar. The only difference is, is this one's the 2D cell battery, and this is the 3D cell battery, as are the rest of these. So, of course, the differences between these two are going to be, this is going to be a little bit brighter because it has an extra battery, it can reach a higher voltage. Um, but they're both just the standard bulb. Now, in terms of age, this is actually the oldest one out of all of them. But I have this one here in the middle because it's kind of a little different than these two. And I'll go on to that. Now, obviously, these two say Uline on them because they were actually free gifts that came from Uline from ordering uh, over a certain amount. But anyway, this one belongs to my wife. This was her flashlight that she had before I moved in. She just had needed a basic fly, uh, flashlight, and everyone told her to get a mag light because, of course, they were pretty indestructible. So she went ahead and got this light here. And I'm going to turn the light off and see. It is daylight out, but... You know, you could see this has a you know, pretty consistent circle, but when you open it and close it, you can see how it has this weird like ring effect, and that has to do with the filament and the way they are in there. But you can go between the spot and the flood, just like any of these other flashlights. Um, so, of course, there's nothing really to write home about this. The next one we have is the three-cell light, and you can see it's just marginally brighter but again you know we have the same thing now this one's just a little newer so maybe it has a little bit of a better reflector inside of it so this could be maybe a generation two but it's, it still has that same kind of ring effect now I could see it to the naked eye the camera kind of just washes it out a little bit but yeah you could you could see it it's not as bad as this one is you know but still now we move on to the third one, which actually has had the filament bulb replaced with an LED bulb. And this one, you can see, is definitely brighter, and it's a different color. It's more of a cool white than the traditional filamented, you know, warm white. Um, the thing about this one is, you know, there's no filament to worry about, so that pattern goes away. You kind of get more of an even circle. In fact, again, you can't, maybe you could make it out in the camera right here, this little bit of a line, if I twist it a little bit. That looks like the wire that's actually on the LED itself. So you can actually focus that, which is pretty neat. Um, I should mention all of these lights have the ability to have the bottom, and I should say the, the end of, the, of it removed here. And, um, well, when you do that, The little um, AA uh, flashlights that they had back in the day used to be able to do this too, and it was considered a candle, as you could see. But you used to be able to slip the light right into the base and have it stand up. This one doesn't do that, but this is kind of good if you need like an area light. And uh, of course, with these units, when you replace the LED, you can do the same thing in that one. Put this to the side over here. This one, obviously, like I said, it'll do the same thing. But you can get a closer up of the LED on here. Now, I've had this bulb for a while, and they do last a long, long time. In fact, honestly, I've never replaced any of the bulbs in these. Um, they do have the replacement bulb in the end, so you do have two bulbs with these. In fact, I put the original filament in this one. And come to think of it, you know what? I may have actually gone through the bulb, and that's what prompted me to get this. But these are just, you know, simple 
you just unscrew the old bulb and put a new one in. And you do have to make sure you pay attention when you buy these to how many cells the flashlight actually has. You don't want to put a two cell LED in a three cell flashlight or it'll pop. But yeah. It, I'm sure there's um, some kind of electronics in this. I don't believe this is just a bulb. There, there should be some kind of um, maybe a resistor in here at least. If not, um, it might be a little more advanced. I don't know if there's maybe a step-up circuit in there or a jewel thief or anything like that. That'd be pretty neat to find out. I've, uh, maybe I'll do a, a teardown video on that one day. I did take the little flashlight apart because there was a problem with the contacts not making connection with the battery. And uh, that did seem to have like a whole bunch of different electronics in it. You know, it wasn't just a resistor. There was a couple pieces in there couple different you know surface mount pieces so that's the basic flashlights which is the point of this video this is a new one I just got and this one's the third generation LED and as you'll see is massively bright this is definitely the brightest flashlight I own at least and I don't have any you know f bit of a collection I just have a bunch of different lights I use for different reasons but this is this is a really really bright light and it throws far. In fact, um, it's got a whole different reflector. In fact, you can see when that yellow is out there. Um, if you take this apart, first of all, this only has a limited range of motion. It can only go from spot to flood and that's it. It doesn't screw off like those do. You have to actually hold it tight and then take the ring off and then this pops off. And if you do that, you'll see that the whole like inside is a little different here. It's got a gear tooth system. Um, well, I'll just show you. If I don't blind myself in the process. Yeah, see, it's got this gear tooth system. This is flat, and the other ones, it's a little longer because it needs to push the bulb in and out. Um, if you compare this to the other bulb, that yellow area, that's the actual emitter. It's much larger than that other bulb. And plus, the lens on here, which you won't make out on camera, is domed a lot different so the the, the uh, angle the angle is a lot greater and that's why when you put this lens on it's able to throw that light a lot better because it's designed for it this one and all these other ones are designed for that incandescent bulb which throws light everywhere so that that f reflector needs to capitalize on that I mean you could still see you know it does reflect that quite a bit I mean maybe let's see I'll swap the camera out Compared to you know this one here, which yeah, this one here, that's just. Whew. I mean yeah, you see, just floods floods the camera right out. Now I'll have a video later on at the end of this uh, here when it's dark outside, and we'll show you the differences. I've taken this one camping when it's very dark out, and you can shine this up into the trees, and it's like a damn searchlight. I haven't tried that with this one yet. So that'll be really interesting to see. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. We'll wait till it gets dark. I should point out that all these have click switches where they either go on or off. And if you're savvy, you can just hold it down a little bit. Like if you just wanted to, you know, just a quick light. And that's kind of how the cops do it. Except theirs are longer and some of them have weights at the end. But this one has this soft button where if you click it twice it goes to a low power mode and if you click it three times it goes to an economy mode which is actually just as bright as this one really um, oops. see what's funny is, is on my desk is a 10 watt LED which is right here and th <laughs> this focus is much brighter which is really funny uh, let's see what else this one is also programmable if you take the tail cap off hold down the button and then screw it in while you hold it this light will flash for a second and then that's mode one and then it'll flash twice as mode two obviously there's up to four modes one of those modes allows you to have a tactical flashlight where you can do the momentary thing the second click would give you the full brightness and the third click gives you a strobe mode which is stupid fast I mean it's really like a, one of those nauseating flashes um, 
so that has a use too. Um, you can also put it in like an outdoors mode, which gives you like the high power light, the low power light, and the strobe, which is great for people who are hiking or you know, and you're going out at night. This one, I think I'm just going to leave it in the default mode. This one's going to go in my toolbox for sure because, you know, when I have to go look at stuff, I really want a nice bright flashlight. The other ones here, you know, one I'll keep in my car and the other ones we'll keep here in the house. Ultimately, I'd like to get the LED bulb like this one has and put it in these two and that'll make them a lot more, you know, useful for me. But other than that, that's what I got. Um, we're going to go ahead and wait till it gets dark out and we'll get a shot of all these at night. Okay, as promised, it's dark out. We're out in my backyard here. And I got the flashlights out here. We're going to see what these look like. Now, there's a tree right here in front of me, which is kind of handy because, as you can see, this is the two-cell flashlight, which does light this tree up pretty nice. But then the minute I put it out into the yard, you can barely see it. There it is against the house. If I uh, have to focus this in. See, it doesn't really have an actual spotlight. It just kind of floods to nothing, which you can kind of see on the tree. Or this little spot, which looks good here, just turns to like, well, an opposite spot, I guess. There's a pond out there you can't see. In fact, that's the end of my house. That's the gutter. Uh, I should say the downspout, but you, you get you get the idea. So let's try the other one here that's got the three cells. Oh, you can see that's definitely brighter. And it has a nicer reflector on it. There's the pond a little bit. You can see there's a bench there. Let's try the LED light. This is the retrofit. Now you can see, this one seems to light more of the yard up, as well as that dot, um, as evident by the tree here. So this one has a more washed effect with a actual focused dot instead of that other thing that the, the uh, filament bulbs are doing. And you can see once you put this to a flood, you just get that big dark spot in the middle. Now, of course, let's try the newest Generation 3 flashlight. Huge improvement. Huge improvement. This actually works as a floodlight and a spotlight. Um, there's really not much difference between the two, actually, in my opinion. But yeah, you can see that pond pretty clear now. And let's try the other power settings. So this is number two, and that's number three. Number three is just as powerful as the LED conversion, but there's just no, no comparison. Let's try running one of the filament lights. Yeah. Yeah. There's no comparison. The point of the story is, folks, go out and get yourself one of these. They're definitely really, really nice flashlights. You can see the shadow on my camera. Yeah, definitely worth the money. Thanks for watching.